Okay, temperatures are dropping tonight. We're gonna lose about 35 degrees Fahrenheit off the thermometer, which puts it below freezing. And this garden is not winterized. So I've got some work to do the rest of today into the evening to get a few things ready, but I'm going to show you the results of what happens with that kind of temperature drop. And I'm not gonna cover much because I'm more interested to see what the effects are of not covering those cool season crops. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you what this garden looks like today before it gets cold, and then we'll do a comparison tomorrow morning after those temperatures drop. Okay, so let's go down and compare how the garden's looking right now at 60 degrees Fahrenheit on October 31st, and we'll then we'll compare that to how it looks tomorrow morning. So here we go. So down into the garden we go, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, late afternoon on October 31st, all is well and all the plants are happy. And we'll just go bed by bed. So this bed right here, uh, it includes turnips, a giant red mustard and some Georgia collards and curly leaf kale off in the distance. Uh, everything is happy, everything is cool tolerant in this bed and especially the kale. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but I am not gonna cover anything and the whole point of bringing you down here to show you this tonight is to let you see how this garden looks at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and then how it looks tomorrow morning when it should be around 30 degrees Fahrenheit and what's the impact of the cold weather when the plants go unprotected. Can they take it? And that's what we wanna find out and we'll walk through here in the morning. So this bed right here, lots of nasturtiums and they were not this big you know, during the summertime but we interplanted with our summer crops just to fill in and provide some color and some flowers for the pollinators and then when we pull the summer crops out, because we didn't need those beds for new crops, we just let them run and run they have. And they're very happy in cool weather and the pollinators have really been taking advantage of the extra flowers that have been there in the beds. This bed is a bed of lettuce, arugula and some leaf lettuce, some red sail lettuce there and more arugula on the other side. And lettuce is very nicely cold tolerant deceptively so in fact you wouldn't think with the the texture of the leaves and the thinness of them that they could be so cold tolerant but they will surprise you so we'll see you in the morning this is a row of carrot seeds that i sowed it's a little bit late but i like to experiment so there they are coming up i sowed them about a week ago and we're just having fun with those different trials and this right here this metal piece this is two pieces of leftover livestock panel that i put there to deter foraging critters who like to find blank bits of soil to dig up and forage through. But when seeds are there, you don't want them to do that. Really, you don't want them to do that anytime, but that's why that's there in case you're wondering. And so more curly leaf kale, just so bulletproof, so low maintenance, and so delicious in anything you put it in. Salads, stir fries, smoothies. It's just a staple must have every spring and fall in this garden. So there's cabbage. Cabbage is really cold tolerant too. More lettuce, more kale varieties. And then I love my Swiss chard and it is, just, it is just so beautiful and delicious. Also great in stir fries and in smoothies. And um, it just steals the show for its ornamental value too. So there that is. And then bok choy and pak choy right there, also cold tolerant and delicious, especially in stir fries and so unique as well. So it's nice to have that in the garden and all of this should fare pretty nicely with the exception of the flowers. But let's show you the this bed right here. This is a leftover from the summer, of course. These are peppers. This bed has been very productive and still is very productive, but I think today is gonna to be its last really good day and uh, sadly, there's just so many peppers still on the plants that probably, uh, you know, aren't gonna get harvested to the ripest stage, but they've done, they've earned their keep, that's for sure. And in the past, you know, this always happens when you get that freeze, that's usually what just kills them back because they go strong until then. And they may look fine tomorrow morning because they tend to have a deferred look of uh, impact to the cold. So although they might look okay in the morning, they're gonna show themselves later in the day or maybe the next day or two, but um, no doubt tomorrow's impact will uh, definitely affect them. This bed right here, carrots. Carrots do great in cold weather. 
They, you can overwinter them in the soil in the cold weather with a little mulch on top, but uh, 30 degrees shouldn't phase them. Carrots are doing great. These are started indoors in deep rooted cell trays and then transplanted, contrary to what a lot of people think you can do. Uh, they're doing great, just like the parsnips are. Also started inside in deep cell trays and also cold tolerant, just like the beets and the radishes. So we'll find out tomorrow. More kale, some broccoli, and some Georgia collards in the background. Dahlias, they're not gonna like tonight's weather. And some sunflowers, some native sunflower varieties, a variety there. And uh, pawpaws in the background. Let's go over to this last bed of Salanova lettuce and take a look at that. That too does very well. Uh, it should be fine at 30 degrees. We'll verify that in the morning. But my recollection is it does just great. So one last look, we'll just take it in from a bigger perspective because we'll pick back up and uh, show this again. But this is what we're looking at on October 31st, late afternoon, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll compare that to unprotected plants that should be hit with a 30 degree drop in temperature by tomorrow morning. All right, it's fourth quarter, late in the game. Clock is running down to zero. I'm calling an audible on a minor change, a compromise, let's call it that. I checked the forecasting apps and a few of the apps have gotten more aggressive on their temperature drops, where now it's gonna be around 28 degrees Fahrenheit and that's right on the edge of where my comfort level is for leaving some of my crops uncovered. And so what I'm doing is a compromise and I'm covering part of my parsnips and part of my carrots, but the other half I'm gonna leave uncovered. So we'll still stick to the original plan but it will give me a little bit of relief so that I can sleep tonight, knowing that at least if the worst case scenario happens, I'm not gonna lose my parsnips and carrots because I still need those for some trials that I'm working on. So can't afford that loss, but let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Good morning, it's November 1st. It's cold outside. At least that's what the temperatures say. Yeah, it's cold outside. And uh, I had some outdoor monitors checking temperature and the forecasters were pretty much right on the money. And in fact, they were still a little conservative because out here in the garden, uh, it's probably cooler because it's lower and cold air is heavier and it sinks. And so I set out a couple thermometers right here in the garden. And we're at 27 degrees, if you can see that lower number. 27 Fahrenheit. We had a low at 25, so probably another hour back. It's two degrees cooler. So I'm really glad that I took some precautions here because I didn't want to take a chance. I put that row cover up just in case it got colder than they even predicted, or even if it got down to 28, which it did. So. What I want to do now is just bring you in, as I said I would, from uh, coming from the greenhouse. And then we can take that same walk that we did yesterday afternoon and assess the damage or lack of it bed by bed. So let me flip around and we'll go from there. Okay, this is the approach. This is my cat trying to get out. Larry. Hey, Larry. Good morning. Hi. Larry's a talker. So this is where I started, and I talked to you about the turnips and the um, giant red mustard and the curly leaf kale, and even the zinnias are doing okay right now. And the nasturtiums. Now, this is interesting. Wow, that's borage right there, and it's uh, definitely <laughs> frozen. No big deal, that's a, that's a warm season flowering plant anyway. The arugula. A little limpy, but overall not bad. And as I told you, the lettuce, surprisingly cold tolerant for um, how deceptive it is because it seems to have such a, or it does have such a thin leaf, or at least it appears that way, but it doesn't seem to daunt it at all. This pretty much looks the same. Not surprised at all about that. <clears throat> and then the lettuce, the romaine lettuce, by the way, 
I didn't call that one out yesterday specifically, but the Swiss chard, just beautiful. Just as it was when we left it yesterday. Bok choy and pok choy. Cat joy. <laughs> okay, here's the peppers. We talked about that and how I said that they probably wouldn't look um, overly distressed uh, first thing, first inspection. And they look about how they looked last night or yesterday afternoon. A little bit of um, curling there. But nothing really to be concerned about. Now one thing I did, I talked about that audible that I called just because I wanted to play it safe in case the temperatures got down below 30, which as you have seen by now they have. So we know the um, what's under there is gonna be fine because what's out here is fine even at 25 degrees. I just didn't wanna take the risk of that foliage die back. And when you get to about 28 Fahrenheit or below on market carrots, uh, the top can definitely die back. Same thing with the parsnips. Um, they look pretty good. They seem to be a little bit wilty there from the cold. And then that, that can get worse as, um, as the day goes on. So uh, just the, the effects are slow to respond, but it does, it does show up. So we know under there is gonna be okay too, but let's take a look at the temperature. I put a thermometer under here to see the difference. So we know it's 25 degrees outside. Let me grab that. Wow. It's 36.5 inside. So the row cover definitely makes a difference in adding several degrees of temperature. The uh, parsnips were under a double layer of thin frost blanket and then the uh, carrots had just a single layer and that provided about four degrees of protection. So even that makes a big difference in the big picture. So the sun is coming up, things are warming up a little bit I think and uh, we made it through the night uh, and those cool season crops are real troopers but now you know what to do just in case you want to play it a little bit safe like I did and not take the chance. Um, it's worth it for the few extra minutes it takes to set up that frost blanket. All right, so here we are at the end of the day on November 1st. This is the day where we had 25 degree Fahrenheit temperatures in the morning. And I gave you the tour around. You saw that. And I also pointed out with the nasturtiums and the peppers that although they weren't really showing signs of damage to the cold yet, they probably would. It just comes a little bit later. Well, here at the end of the day, on the same day, they're already showing that. So I wanted to point that out to you to let you see some of the actual damage that now is manifesting itself that we didn't see right during the coldest part of the day. All right, there you go. Remember that beautiful stand of nasturtiums that we stood in front of yesterday and this morning and I talked about how much the pollinators were loving it. Well, this is what I was expecting to see and now we see it. And so we are getting some dieback from the cold weather and it really is starting to take its toll as you can see with the marigolds and the nasturtiums and then let's walk over to the peppers too because i also mentioned that that probably would show up a little bit later and now you can see there's more wilty look to these plants so they are definitely showing signs of the cold damage and there are those pepper plants and just look at that so yes it does happen it just happens a little bit later and let me just walk around here and let's see what we can see elsewhere on these plants. Yep, okay. So right there too. But, you know, take heart in knowing if you've got peppers that this happens to, hopefully they really were performing all during the time they were supposed to, which is the summertime, and right up until November, that's not a bad track record whatsoever. So that little bit of inf additional information hopefully will help you see what I was talking about. And uh, that's gardening for you but there's always tomorrow and next season.